all week. Um, but we are here to uh, worship anyway.
back at Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Just a few names that I saw in the book. That's right. 
And I was so impressed that I quickly went home and got on Amazon. And I got my copy. Yeah, I have my copy. It is a rich, rich capture, amen, of the Payne family and the tremendous impact that they have had, not only in this community, but also in this church. All right. A historical church, amen, with a biblical mandate. And no doubt, our ancestors, the Paines, have seen segregation and they've seen the integration. All right. They've seen division and they've seen unity and they've seen the Great Depression and they've seen many recesses. But they did not lose faith in the God that they serve. And as I reflect on the theme that you all have chosen this morning, a celebration of life, loving memories. Coming out of Psalms 145 and verse 4, and it says, One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. The psalmist David, King David, in these words, and David knew something about praising God. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. David knew something about worshiping the living God. Amen. All right. And David says, you are my God and you are my king. Yes, and David was determined to let generations know about the great God of heaven and earth. Yes. And so I was reflecting this morning, amen, on your theme and I said a celebration of life and truly though our loved ones have passed on we can celebrate them this morning amen because they died in Christ Jesus. But Paul, the word of God says they that fall asleep in Jesus shall live again. <laughs> amen. And, and, and I was meditating on this passage of scripture Amen. And uh, David writing and encouraging us that great is the Lord and greatly to be great. praised. Amen. Yes. And that he is a God that is worthy of praise. And, and, and I thought about your key verse there that one generation shall praise thy works and shall pass it on to the next generation. And it made me wonder, Pastor Johnson. How are we doing in that area? That's right. That's right. How are we doing in that area? I'm encouraged this morning, amen, because as I look around the sanctuary and as I look in the choir, I see many, many young people. A generation that I'm not quite familiar with. But it encouraged my heart to know that there is a next generation of worshipers, amen. And Mount Calvary has always had a, a strong youth ministry. Hey, Amen. Has always had a ministry that sought to reach and to teach young people at an early age. Yeah. I see you back there, my sister. <laughs> Amen. And for many years, when I began to preach, I served as the youth minister here. All right. And it was the greatest time that I had. See, because the thing about kids, <laughs> see, if you give them a little beat, you give them a little song, they get excited about Jesus. <laughs> I don't know when it happens, Reverend Dunn, but it seems with the older folks, hey, man, you got to encourage them. <laughs> you got to Coach them. All right. You got to beg them. And then they might get around to serving God. Amen. Y'all say, well, what is this pastor talking about? I'm family, so I can talk about us. Amen, somebody. <laughs> but young people, amen, when they understand who Jesus is, they don't Amen. I'm not 
not going to trouble you long, but as I was reflecting on Psalms 145, verse 4 there, where David talked about praising God's good work and declared it to the next generation, and I pondered if this was some kind of mandate. And God took me back this morning, amen, to Joshua chapter 4. Joshua chapter 4, and if you would just give me patience this morning, amen, I, I want to ask that you stand as I read the first nine verses of Joshua chapter 4, and I'll be reading from the NIV version this morning, and the word of God reads this way, when the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose 12 men from among the people, yeah. one from each tribe, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe and said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites to serve as a sign among you in the future when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Yeah. Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So the Israelites did as Joshua commanded them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites as the Lord had told Joshua. And they carried them over with them to their camp, where they put them down. Joshua set up the twelve stones that had been in the middle of the Jordan at the spot where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And they are there to this day. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. The Mount Calvary Church family, amen, this morning, I just want to use as a thought, as a subject, as a topic this morning, remembering what God has done. Amen. All right. Remembering what God has done. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray now that you will use yeah. my time of meditation and preparation so that these thy people would hear less of me and more of thee. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength yeah. and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You see, what I've discovered today is that we all have these social media platforms. We've got these smart devices and uh, we love to take photos and videos, and we are very good about telling the story about ourselves. Amen? All right, all right. Oh, everywhere we go, we snap photos, and we even add a little video, and we add audio, and we post them on our social platforms, and, and we have become a people who love to tell our life story. Mm, all right. And I thought about that this morning and I said, you know, if we spent half the time talking about the goodness of God, all right. as we do talking about ourselves, I believe the Lord. The world would be a much better off place. Yes, and when I look at the text that I read this morning coming out of Joshua, 
the children of Israel had been wandering in the wilderness for yeah. some 40 years. God had rescued them from the Egyptians. God had brought them through the Red Sea. God had even destroyed their enemy, Pharaoh, and his entire army. But there was a generation, amen, who had a problem remembering. You see, this is one of the fallacies that we have as a people, amen, is that we have a tendency to forget what I call selective memory. We, 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 we remember what we used to do before we were saved. <laughs> and every now and then, we, we, we have a tendency to walk down memory lane about who we were with and who we fell in love with and who we hung out with and who we smoked with and who we drunk with and what our favorite drink was. But when trouble shows up, we are quick to forget what God has done for us, how he has brought us, and how he has kept us. And so what we find with the Israelites, as God had them in the wilderness, and he had called them unto himself, and he says, I'll be your God and you'll be my people. That's right. He says, I'll be your king yeah. and I'll make you a nation. Right. But every time they hit a bump in the road, and it really wasn't a bump in the road because God was leading and God was guiding and God was providing. There was manna that was falling from heaven. There was water that was flowing from a rock. At no time did they have a need. They didn't even have to go to Walmart to get clothes. Because their clothing was miraculously growing as they were growing. But yet, every time they felt something went wrong, they had a tendency to remember Egypt. All right, all right. And they even had the audacity to say, we wish, God, that you had not brought us out here in the desert to die. We wish we were back in Egypt. And so God had to let an entire generation die off, wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And there would be only two, that he, man, that would be crossing over into the promised land. And Joshua being one of the two. And so in chapter 3 of Joshua, amen, we see now God is getting ready to lead the people into the promised land. But there's one obstacle that's in their way. It's called the Jordan River. Y'all yes, right. know the old songs we used to say about crossing over the Jordan River. Jordan River, I'm bound to cross. That's right. <laughs> Some of the old saints remember that hymn that we used to sing. Jordan River, I'm bound to cross. I got one more river right. to cross. <laughs> well, 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 as they're standing there and the Jordan River is before them, and the text says that the Jordan River was overflowing at this time of year because it was harvest time. And the river had pressed its banks. And as they stood there, 
they wondered how they would be able to cross over into this land that God had promised them. You see, what we see is an opportunity. God sees. What we see as an obstacle, God sees as an opportunity. Amen? Amen. What seems like it is undoable for us, God says all things are possible yes, with him. Yes, and so in chapter 3, God calls Joshua and God tells Joshua, Joshua, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get the Levites and the Ark of the Covenant. Come on now. And I want you to put the Levites, the Levite priesthood, and the Ark of the Covenant, and I want them to go first. You see, God is a God that is always out for yes. right. So you have to understand that the Ark of the Covenant contains the commandments of God. Right. It was the Ark of the Covenant that represents the presence of God yes. right. with the people of God. Right. And God told Joshua, have the Ark of the Covenant lead the way. And I want the priest to step down into the river. And he said, when they step down into the river, you will be able to see the hand of God. Yeah. Yeah. Joshua here obeyed God. And he told the Israelites that each tribe would follow the Ark of the Covenant. And then God once again miraculously parted the Jordan River just as he had parted the Red Sea some 40 years early. And I love the fact that it is the word of God that led the people of God into a place of God's own temple. All right. Let me say that again for somebody. It was the word of God that led the people of God into a place of God's own choosing. All right. What I've discovered today is that too often we as Christians have a tendency to get out ahead of God. Amen. That's right. We don't wait for God to speak. We don't wait for God to move. Many of us feel like we have been deputized, amen, to do God's light work. And we move out. And we move in areas God never intended for us to be. And then we find ourselves between a rock and a hard place. And then we didn't want to consult with God. But I want to encourage you this morning. You do good to seek God first. And after the Israelites being led by the Levitical priesthood carrying the Ark of the Covenant, the priests stood in the waters and they tell me that the Jordan River, the waters began to divide and to build up on all sides. And as if that wasn't good enough, but Paul the text go on and it says that then God dried up the land. Yeah. All right. Yes, so that they could cross over the Jordan River on dry land. Yes, yes sir. What a mighty God we serve. Yes. See, God is not a God that will leave you stuck in the mud. Yes. <laughs> but he, when God does it, he does all things well. And so, as we come to the end of chapter 3 and in the beginning of chapter 4, it was as if God had a thought. The children had now passed over and they were actually standing now on the opposite side of the Jordan River, they were literally standing in the promised land. The land that God had promised their ancestors. But because the ancestors refused to obey God, it took 
the next generation to walk into the promise. But after everybody had crossed over, it's like God had this thought because God understands that we as people, we are so quick to forget. God keeps blessing us. But every time trouble comes our way, we are so quick to forget what God has done. And some of us think that if he did it once, well, it's played out. <laughs> but the same God that divided the Red Sea divided the Jordan River. And I stopped by to tell this generation that if he did it once, he'll do it again and again and again. There is no limit to God's power. We cannot exalt his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. And so God says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Joshua. I, 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 I know you all. I know you. You'll, you'll see me do an amazing thing today and tomorrow. You'll totally forget about it. So God tells Joshua, he says, Joshua, I want you to get 12 men, All right. one from each tribe of the Israelites. And I want you to send those men and where the priests are still standing in the midst of the river on dry ground. God says, I want those brothers to go get a big stone. Well, that's right. And he tells Joshua, he says, and when you collect the 12 stones, I want you to build a memorial that's right. in the place that you will lay your head tonight. That's right. All right. And I stopped by to tell you today that, that God wants us to remember what he has done. Yes. God wants us to remember. Verse number seven says, God says, put the rocks there that they might serve as a memorial for this thing that I have done this day. I don't want you to forget what I've done for you. That's right. I'm speaking to a generation, amen, that is quick to talk about what other people have done for you. We are good at telling others how somebody hooked us up. We're good at dropping names, amen. We're good at wheeling and dealing and negotiating. And we're quick to give each other the praise. Come on. All right. But what David realized in Psalm 145 was that without God, we are nothing and we need it. Even when somebody else is blessing you, they can't even bless you without God. Because he is the source of all blessings. And so God, amen, he says, he says, Joshua, to help this generation build a memorial, one so that they will remember what I have done. But not only that, but I see something else here. I see something else here because God goes on and he says this. He, he says this. He says, to serve as a sign amongst you. To serve as a sign amongst you. See, we are so quick to forget what God has done because we no longer have spiritual markers. We move from one blessing to the next blessing. And a lot of times, 
we don't even stop long enough to thank God. That's right. Amen. So God says, he says, I want you to set up these stones to serve as a sign. But not only that, he says, and in the future, when your children ask, what do these stones mean? <laughs> Tell them how God Wait a minute, wait a minute before you get the class. 
laughing too much, amen. I got to talk about us. Because we think it's okay to pass on 401k. We think it's okay to pass on big bank accounts. We want to pass on the nice car and two or three properties. But let me tell you something. None of that will get your children into history. And all that you pass on to your kids, the big life insurance, the, the trust, and the will. But in all that you pass on to your kids, you need to pass on Jesus. to feel. 
hear him. That's right. All right. That's right. All right. Preach. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Church, that's the problem today. See, that word is fear. God doesn't want us to be scared of it. Yes. That's right. That's right. That word fear in the text means reverence. That's right. yeah. It means to give honor, yeah. Yeah. glory, yeah. and reverence yeah. to his name. Yeah. To recognize God for who he is yeah. and who we are. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you, we're living in a day and we're living in a time for the fall where people no longer fear God. When people no longer reverence God. I remember growing up that even the wine of would have a reverence for God. The wine would go to the wine would go to the ABC store and he did his little early in the day. Yeah. And by noon time. He would be feeling pretty toasty. <laughs> and then he would go stumbling down the sidewalk. All right. And in that way, the wino would pass by a church. And he'd be drunk and he'd be stumbling. But as soon as he saw the church, he'd try to straighten up. He'd try to walk by the church. Because he knew that there is a God. The name of God. Right. See, we're living in a day now where we got the audacity to put God in rap music where we are cursing and swearing and calling everybody out of their name and we still put God in music. Right. We don't reverence Him. We don't fear Him. We even got commercials today where they say, not afraid of dying, not afraid of burning in hell. We got atheists making commercials today. Saying there is no God. But God said to his people, and he's talking to us today, that we got to have spiritual markers in our life to remind us and to remind our children and our grandchildren about the goodness of God. Yes, I remember growing up in that old Baptist church in South Carolina. And I made the mistake one time of running in church. <laughs> and then I really, really put my life on the line <laughs> when I ran up in the pool pit. <laughs> I had the mother of the church. I had my grandmother. I had my mama. I had everybody after me. They wanted to kill me. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because you didn't play in the house of God. All right, all right. Now I know it don't happen here, Reverend Johnson Day, man, but I've been in some churches these days where there is no respect of God in the house of God. All right. God says, Build a memorial so that they may know. They may know yeah. that I am God and that they will reverence me. They will fear me because they understand who God is. And the stones were a reminder of God's mighty presence 
It was a reminder of God's mighty power, and it was a reminder of God's provision. All right. Our ancestors have given us a rich history. They've given us a rich history that includes service to God. Amen? Amen. But in 2024, I hear that there are some out there that, that wants to roll back our voting rights. Wow. They tell me they want to erase and rewrite our history. They tell me that they want to stifle the advances that we make. But I stop by to tell you, Mount Carey, what God has done for me. Yeah. You can't erase it. Yeah. You can't roll it back. You can't stifle it. Yeah. He's been too good to me. Yeah. All right. And I got more all over the place, Brother John. Yeah. You can't silence me yeah. when it comes to the goodness of God. Yeah. All right. So let them roll it back. <laughs> we still can celebrate and serve a good God. All right. Because I declare today that in 2024, the God that our ancestors served is still seated on the throne. I declare today that he's still parting waters. He's still making a way out of nowhere. He's still bringing yes. souls into the promises. Yes. Great is the Lord yes. and greatly to be praised. Yes. Is he worthy? Yes. Has he done anything for you? Yes. All right, all right. I'm getting ready to close now. But, but see, Jesus would build on these stones. Yeah. Good word. Jesus, when he came to earth, amen. He would build on these stones during his earthly ministry. Mm -hmm. And he would say, upon this rock, I will build my church. All right. And the very gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus is the New Testament cornerstone. Yeah. He is our rock. He's a rock in a weary land. Yeah. He's trouble. He's trouble. He takes care of us. All right. Our bread of a troubled world. Yes, he is. And so today, amen, we let our communion serve as a memorial of his death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah. We let our baptism serve as a memorial to a soul that's Move the newness of life. That's right. We build memorials. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed that as we look around this country, we got monuments. We got headstones. We got parks. We even got buildings that we call Hall of Fame. All right, that's right. We got museums. Yeah. All of these things focus on man That's and right. what man has done. Come on. I just want to encourage the Payne family, this generation is a worshipers, that build your landmarks, build your memorials, yes. while you have precious, sweet memories yes. of loved ones that's going on. Yes. Remember now, you got a mandate to know God for yourself, yeah. to serve God for yourself. You won't be able to get in on grandmama and granddaddy's fight. You won't be able to get in on daddy and mama's hotel. You gotta know the Lord for yourself. And you gotta be willing, amen, to share your testimony. Tell this next generation about the goodness of God and all that he has done for us. May God bless you, and may heaven smile on you. God has been good to us. Amen. Give God some praise. Celebrate.
celebrate Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because he is life. He is life. And he has come to give us eternal life. Amen. So when we celebrate, amen, the lives of those that have gone on before, what we are doing is we are giving glory and praise to the God that they serve. And the Jesus, amen, who promised to meet them at the finish line. Amen. But if you're here today, this morning, amen, All right. and you don't know Jesus That's right. in the pardon of your sin, you might have all kind of marks. You might have Facebook, Twitter. Uh -huh. You might have all kind of social media out there. Oh, your life may look good. But let me tell you something about these social media platforms that I found out. People always try to put their best stuff out there. That's right. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. They put all their best stuff out there. They always seem to be going on vacation. They always seem to be somewhere shopping. They always seem to have just bought a nice purse or a nice pair of shoes. Everything they put out there is always good. But let me tell you something. Without Christ, that's right. Their life is falling apart. All right. Hear me now. Without Jesus Christ, you cannot have joy. You might be happy, but you cannot have joy because real joy comes with Jesus. Amen. You cannot have peace because he is the prince of peace. And he says, my peace I give you, a peace that surpasses all understanding. And so if you're here this morning, amen, and you do not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, I want to extend to you the invitation to salvation. All right. Mm -hmm. You are descendants of a great people, the king. This was a family, faith, a family that served God. But this one thing you must know. Just because your last name is Payne, Colbert, or many of the others that have served in this great church. All right. You don't make it in because of your last name. You make it in because of his great name. understand that God loves you so much. He wants to be with you so much. Yeah. He wants to spend not today and tomorrow, but he wants to spend eternity with you. Yes. And young people, I need you to understand that he sent his son Jesus to rescue you from the problem that you could not solve for yourself. The Bible tells us that it is sin that separates us from God. But through the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, you now have access to this great God of heaven and earth. And I plead with you this morning, I beg of you to consider Jesus. He has done everything to include giving his life so that you might have eternal life. So while the music is playing, if there's one this morning that wants to make a decision for Jesus Christ, this is your time. That's right. Don't sleep without me. Is there one this morning? Don't do that. He's standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking. And I promise you, if you open up your heart and you let him in, your life will never be the same. I'm not going to sell you a wolf ticket this morning, like.
Well, you give your life to Jesus and you'll never have any problems. You, you move to Easy Street and, and everything you want, you'll get. That is not what Scripture says. Jesus said that he would be with you in the midst of your trials and tribulations. And that he would never leave you.
here in the city of Fairfax. Some 61 years ago, in the month of August, Dr. King said that he dreamed of a time when the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners would be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. Now we also have a homework assignment uh, for you. Uh, next month, early voting belief begins here in Northern Virginia. And your black job is, <laughs> is to go to the polls and vote. Amen? Vote like you never voted before. Somebody say amen. 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 I can say nothing else about that. Do we have any closing remarks or thanks from any representative from the Payne family? Yes. All right. Who's going to give us that? All right. Come on, Brother Bryce Mayo. Look at here. Look at here.
Members of the committee again, thank you, thank you, thank you. I could not have done any of it without you guys, so I don't take it lightly. Every person that was involved needed to be involved. Thank you. Rhonda, girl, all these pictures y'all see,